This video is a follow-on from the previous three videos in the playlist. You may wish to watch them first. Let's now have a look at the following computer program. And we can see the first line of the program is creating a string. Now I'm going to show that string schematically here. And you can see it has all of the uppercase letters from A through to Z and that the index positions are shown from 0 through to 25. Now the second line of the program is going to take a slice of this particular string. And we start off by looking at the 10. And the 10 marks the index position from which we start to take the slice. Now this 5, what that's going to do, it's going to mark the stop position. And we have to be quite clear as to what this means. Now I'm going to show the stop position by this bouncing X. And you can see it marks the index position 5. Now it means we don't go as far as this 5. So what the 5 means in this example is we go as far as the 6. So this 5 marks off the 6. Now if you remember from the videos you've previously seen, it's often thought by many people who use string slicing that this 5 you go to 5 minus 1. So you would go to the fourth index position. That's not the case. You have to think of this slightly differently. The 5 marks the stop position. So you can see here we go to the 6 and that certainly isn't 5 minus 1. What we can see however here we have minus 1. And that means we go from the 10 to the 9 to the 8 to the 7 to the 6. So this should give us a clue also as the fact that the 5 points to the 6. So the string we will take, the string slice, starts at the K, goes to the J, the I, the H and the G in this direction. So the string we take is K, J, I, H and G. And this is the key. I started at the K there. I said K, J, I, H, G. I didn't say it's the string G H I J K because of the direction specified by the minus one. So when we see the printout of this particular program, you can see that this line here is responsible for printing the slice string and that slice string appears here. And if you have a look at it, it's K J I H G. In other words, it has been reversed. You can think of it as being reversed because we started at the K, went to the J, the I, the H, the G. So this particular variable here, the sliced underscore string, took the slice and you can see that slice got reversed. For the program we've just considered, we considered the following alphabet string here. And we can see that we started at index position 0, to 1 to 2 all the way up to 25. Now this is one way in which we can index a string in Python. This is the other way here. You see it's the same string but the end of the string as it was in the previous video we mark as minus 1. Then we come to minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 all the way down to minus 26. So there is two ways to index a string in Python. And this diagram here shows you both ways. Now let's consider this computer program here. Well, straight away we know we're going to get the alphabet string. But you can see in this example I've marked the index as the negative version, starting at the minus 1, going all the way down to the minus 26. Now I've done this because the way in which the second line of the program has been set up, we can see here that in the square brackets we have minus 26, minus 10 and 1. So the fact that we have the minus 26 and the minus 10 is telling us that we're using the index positions as shown in the diagram, i.e. the negative ones. Starting at minus 26 and we can see that that marks the start point here. Now this is minus 10. Now that tells us where the stop position is. So this bouncing X marks the stop position and that should inform us that when we go from the position of the start, which is the minus 26, towards the stop position, we don't go as far as the stop position. So this minus 10, in fact, marks off the minus 11 position. If we look here at the 1, what does that mean? 
Well, it means we go to the start position, which is minus 26, and we add 1 to it. Now, what's minus 26, 1 added to it? It's minus 25. When we're in the 25 position, which is the minus 25, you add 1 to minus 25, then you get minus 24. So what we can see is that this one is sending us in this direction here. So the string that we take is this one. We go from the A all the way up to the P. So when we now actually run the program, we can see that this is the output we get. A, B, C, all the way up to the P. So we can see it is possible to use string slicing with the way in which we index the string as shown in this particular example. OK, let's consider another computer program as shown here. And we can see the first line is going to produce the alphabet string again, and it's here. And we can see that we've indexed it negatively, going from minus 1 through to minus 26. And if we look at the second line, we can see that this minus 14 marks the start of the slice we're going to take. And this minus 23 marks the stop value shown by this bouncing x, which means we will not go as far as that. So what this minus 23 actually marks off is this minus 22 here. Now, of course, here we can see we've got minus 1. And we have to realize that we are going to take the minus 1 and we're going to add that to the minus 14. Or we're going to step by minus 1. So from minus 14, and you're stepping in the negative minus 1 direction, you're going to end up at minus 15. When you're at minus 15, you're going to go to minus 16. So what this minus 1 is telling us, we're going to go in this direction. So the string that we're going to mark off is shown here. We go from the M to the L to the K, all the way up to the E. And the key here is to note that I said M, L, K, J, I'm going in that particular direction. I'm not starting at the E. I'm starting at the start value, which was the minus 14, and I know I'm going in steps of minus 1. Consequently, when we look at the program output, this is what we get. And if you look here, you can see that's the slice that's been taken, and it matches what was shown in the schematic diagram. But of course, we have to realize that we have the M, the L, the K, all the way up to the E. It's effectively been reversed. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.